Our next guest, guest is Ruth Manorama, uh, and uh, I would like to welc you, welcome you up on stage. And you're a little thrown into this uh, whole event, aren't you? Uh, yeah, and, and uh, I, I, am, I have read about you and uh, the things you've done, but if you would like to describe yourself, what would you like to say? And if you reflect on, on human rights uh, uh, as one area, and identity, what, what is your spontaneous reflections? I give you a few minutes to to uh, to reflect on that. Yeah. My name is Ruth Manorama. I come from India. I by myself, you know, representing the Dalit community. When you say Dalit, it means the groups of people who who are the former untouchables, and the present name that we given to ourselves is Dalit. Dalit is both you know, the oppressed situation, but we also say that we will not, you know, get oppressed and keep silent about it, but we will, you know, revolt against this caste discrimination and caste violence and establish ourselves as Dalit, proud Dalit, and, you know, we will claim our rights. So I've been a human rights worker for, some, uh, for, a, for about three decades, from the age of 23 years old. I've been working and then seeing to that that I'm mostly involved in educating the communities and organizing in Bangalore and also with along with my friends in the whole country with the Dalit women because we feel Dalit women not only suppressed by caste system but they are also suppressed by patriarchy. Therefore, we want to be really, want to be free from class cost and gender oppression. I have a question there. Uh, that that's a really tough uh, position mm -hmm. to be to be oppressed in so many different uh, systematical yeah. systematical ways. Mm -hmm. So so what do you think are the the keys in order to to uh, make a change in that area? What would you think? It's really tough. In spite of good laws in the country, to to reduce to reduce and eliminate the practices which emanate from caste called untouchability practices. We thought that the law would really help us to be free from you know, this kind of caste discrimination. But I tell you, the number is growing and ever widening. From 1995 to 2007, there have been 400,000 cases have been registered. There are many cases have not even reported in the police stations. You have, you know, individual violences as well as violences relate to the Dalit community as a whole. Very recently, two years ago, that have been, you know, the uh, uh, people uh, in Orissa. Uh, Orissa is uh, uh, near uh, to uh, Calcutta. There, in that Orissa, that Dalit people who have been converted uh, themselves to Christianity have been butchered and massacred. There was big riots by the Hindutva forces. 50,000 people were rooted from their villages. They are displaced. They are still as refugees. So these kind of hard things are going on. What we do is we really bring these problems through a public hearing. And we invite you know, sensitive and sensible you know, judges to sit as you know, juries and to give predicament. Based on the predicament, we also go to the courts or take this matter to the government, see to that a proper justice for these people should be given. So we are saying not only relief should be given, they, they are to be given rehabilitation and reparation for whatever injustice has been done. So it's not only me. Dalit movement in India is a very big movement. If people have suffered for 4,000, 4,000 and 5,000 years of this caste discrimination and the Dalit groups, you know, the, the, the people were really resisted, resiliently, they really resisted that we will not tolerate such nonsenses. Therefore, the human rights, uh, you know, issues related to Dalit has become a quite a central issue in the Indian context. So we are also using the government provisions, laws, in order to protect the community. One side, while we are fighting for human rights, another side, we also engage ourselves in development. 
we feel that education is a good level playing field on which Dalit women and children, Dalit uh, you know, men and women can come up and then uh, uh, develop their families. Because we feel if first generation of people are getting educated, then our children and they will be able to come out of this caste discrimination. This is happening on one side, but there is also because we are, um, we are saying no to all the enslavement, uh, because we are asserting ourselves, violence is also increasing. It is, you know, it has two sides, but we will not stop. But with the help of the Dalit movements and the women's movement very specifically, like, you know, we are fighting for our rights. And the last question, Ruth. Uh, how do you address the need in every human being to be the one you want to be, to have the chance to develop your, your own identity in a system where that is thrown upon you and, and judged and, and uh, being discriminated on? Uh, what do you think is important here? Yeah, it's a really tough, uh, you know, uh, uh, tough uh, work to really make people free. First of all, the people who have been subordinated for a long time, they must be sensitized that they are human beings. First of all, the victims must realize that we should not tolerate any kinds of you know, violations, whether it is horizontal or vertical. We will not accept uh, you know, the untouchability practices. We will not enslave. That kind of consciousness must arise. The movements like ours should really educate our masses, one. Secondly, sensitize also people who are in power, like the, the academics, the judiciary, the professionals, so that they will see this is a big human right violation in the country and open up their eyes and start supporting our efforts. Second. Third is sensitization to a group like this, uh, knowing about this issue. People do not know about that issue. Our government says we have you know, completely abolished untouchability by law. But you know, this is existing. They will also give the same thing, same answer in the international you know, arenas when we take up that issue. Therefore, I feel that we should say that, yes, laws are there, but laws are not implemented. We, we, fi we find our rights, only <coughs> the rights of de jure, not de facto. We want to really, yes, we want to really enjoy the rights, uh, enjoy freedom, because we are born as human beings, I think we have a right to do that. So sensitization uh, uh, yeah, on the victims, sensitization of the perpetrators, sensitization of people who stand outside and look at what is happening to us. I think the international community should join so that the sensitization, education really take place. Once you get educated, I think that if you are very sensible and sensitive people, we will not keep quiet. We will talk about that issue. I think international human rights, now when we talk about human rights, it is interdependent. My human right issue is, you know, that you must find an answer. For you, your human right violation, we must give an answer. I think the world community should work together. So it is interdependent and it is universal, therefore, what is happening in India, you cannot just say, okay, it's all right, it's happening in India. It happens to India today, it can happen to you uh, at a different times in a different way. Therefore, I think that you know, sensitization and education of people will bring about changes. One day it was possible in South Africa to overthrow apartheid. It is possible in India to overthrow, in South Asia, to overthrow this kind of heinous crimes against humanity. Thank you very much, Ruth, and good luck with your very important work. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much.